Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and this is such a fun early R&B concert poster with four interesting people on it and great graphics, beautiful red and blue line, a layout I should say, and a nice tall cardboard concert poster from 1952 and uh, showing its age. It's somewhat fragile and has a corner missing down there and everything. But it hails from Phoenix City, Alabama, which to be honest I had never heard of before getting this little group of posters and that was a uh, like an army outpost down there in Alabama and in the uh, 40s and early 50s it had a notorious reputation as being um, a real haven for organized crime and prostitution and gambling and stuff like that. It was near Fort Benning, Georgia, that training center. So um, as a result it was known as Sin City and this club plantation I'm sure was very much a center, one of the centers of that. See that along the top there and uh, 1952 it's um, Monday night, April 7th, and at uh, $2, because there are four interesting artists on here, I've shown another po poster from the same location in the year that it was $1.50 or something. Anyway, Johnny Otis being the headliner, what a renaissance man. If, if you found this video, you probably know who he is. Um, this is, a, uh, right now as I cut this, it's the summer of 2011. Johnny Otis is still with us, still alive and kicking and doing things, and he... He just had so many different career angles, uh, besides leading the R&B band, which he did extremely successfully. He's been a band leader, a disc jockey, a record producer, a talent scout, author, head of his own record label, nightclub boss, TV variety show host, rock and roll star, R&B pioneer. He's just, um, he's got an amazing resume. There he is, Johnny Otis. Um, and uh, he really embraced African American culture. He's uh, he really, he really has, and he's always done great things for it. He formed his first band, actually, at the end of World War II, 1945, and produced Harlem Nocturne, one of the most enduring R&B hits of that era. And uh, he's based in Los Angeles, and he, um, as a talent scout and a record chief and everything, a label chief, he helped discover and nurture a stable of talent that included the Coasters, big hit makers in the 50s, uh, Little Esther Phillips, who's on the poster, Charles Brown, Etta James, and saxophonist Big J McNeely. And uh, the reason it says with his orchestra, the Barrel House Review under his name, in 1947 he opened a club in Watts in Los Angeles called the Barrel House Club. Interestingly, one year after the show in 1953, all Johnny did was um, produce the original recording of Hound Dog by Big Mama Thornton. Boy, what an important record that was, obviously covered by Elvis a couple of years later. Later in the 1950s, he was the A&R guy for King Records, and he discovered Jackie Wilson, R&B legend, of course, Hank Ballard of Midnighters fame, and even Little Willie John. And then in 58, still the same decade as this poster, he recorded his best-known song, Willie and the Hand Jive, which, of course, you know, teenagers, including mine, still sing and snap their fingers to to this day. Now, Little Esther, to me, is a huge draw on this poster also. I just love Little Esther, who later was just known as Esther Phillips in recording circles. Um, would you believe she, to this day, remains the youngest female singer at age 14 to have a number one R&B hit? 14, can you imagine? She's 16 on this poster. Did I just mention that? Um, a number one R&B hit. And um, by this time, age 16, she already had eight top 10 R&B hits. Now, granted, they were very closely tied to Johnny Otis. He found the songs and recorded them with her and everything else. Uh, but still, take nothing away from her. And uh, then she made the big mistake, though, perhaps she had bad advice, of parting ways with Johnny Otis and thinking she could make it bigger on her own or something. And um, she went pretty much downhill, both musically and, unfortunately, on drugs. But what's really cool is that in the early 60s, no less than Kenny Rogers, found her like in a Houston dive and sort of brought her back into the public eye and uh, she she actually came out and had another number one hit, sort of a reborn Little Esther in the early 60s with Release Me. I'm sure you'll recognize it. Release me and let me love again. There's a very distinctive high voice that really uh, you know, distinguishes her. And so that, that was neat enough, right? You come back a decade later. But how about this? Reinvented again in the 70s. No longer little Esther, just as Esther Phillips. And she gets a top 10 hit, which you probably will recognize, an updated uh, disco version of this song.
So that means she had real prominence in at least three different decades. It's sort of like three different personas. That's really crazy that What a Difference a Day Makes was impactful enough that um, she performed it live on Saturday Night Live's fourth ever show in 1975. Now down here at the bottom getting pretty good billing with a photo of his face is Mel Walker. And um, he actually was very, it's, he's almost like a, he is a band member of Johnny Otis and Little Lester. He actually sang lead vocal on three of Johnny Otis's biggest hits, including the number ones, Mistrust and Blues and Cupid's Boogie from 1950. So Mel Walker, a very integral, very important part of the band. And yes, he also recorded duets with Little Lester. But what cracks me up is even smaller than Mel Walker there, uh, down there is Preston Love. See that? Preston Love doesn't even get a photograph. He does get a little uh, black platter and a little design of musical notes, but he's way down there near the torn off corner. Preston Love played in several bands, including like Fats Waller and Count Basie. And in fact, he played on Basie's only number one hit, Open the Door, Richard. And he eventually went on to become a band leader himself, working with Billie Holiday, there's a gasp of air, and Winoni Harris. And it's funny, as, um, as the, uh, the decades progressed, you don't even want to hear who Preston Love worked with like in the 70s going forward because he was Motown's West Coast band leader. And so, yes, he worked with Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Four Tops, Temptations, T-Bone Walker, Ruth Brown, and even Frank Zappa and Janis Joplin. Wow, those studio cats really got around. And I just love a poster that's so deep in talent like this, where every, you know, they're not just names on cardboard, they all have a story to tell. And, and uh, not on every poster. And there's a lot of posters where the people are not interesting. But in this one, it's a Grand Slam home where all four people are very interesting. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks a lot for coming by today. And we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.